Hi friends, this is Sharon from Mad Paper Crush. And today I wanted to show you, well, this is my ephemera folio um, that I made based off of one of Gail Agostinelli's videos. And I love the way it keeps um, my ephemera. But what I've started noticing is as I start fussy cutting things, and I put them into pockets, it becomes really hard for me to, you know, find exactly what I'm looking for. So I have some stamps in here. Um, I have, and it's mostly it's the littler things. Like these are a little bit easier to kind of flip through and, and see what I'm looking for or need. But like my labels here, I, you know, it's really hard to find anything without almost pulling everything out and going through everything and then, you know, putting them all back in. And even my little numbers and things that I fussy cut out, you know, they needed a space so that I could look through them easier and find what I'm looking for faster. So what I decided to do was add this little envelope page that has a tab on the top here to my ephemera folder so that I could keep all of my little pieces of ephemera in one place, but also it would allow me to look through things right where they are. So you can see I have this nice big space now that's nice and flat that I can kind of look through everything, find what I'm looking for, and then I can keep it all in one place right here, and it'll go into whoop, into my ephemera folder here, and I have it like um, closed with a little brad there, and then I can just clip it right into my ephemera folder, and everything's going to be there and taken care of when I'm ready to look for it. So I hope you'll join me today as we make this flat lay envelope to hold ephemera. Okay, so for this project, I'm probably going to be using these tools. Um, you don't necessarily need them all, but I'm just showing you what I'm going to be using. So um, I'm probably going to be using my tab maker just to make a little tab for the top. Um, I'm going to be using my cutter for sure and probably my scoring tool to, just to make some scores but this is one that you don't necessarily need if you don't have it and then you're also going to need I'm going to be using my paper piercer here you could use an awl or um, even just you know something sharp a pin or a tack or something like that scissors a pencil I'm probably going to be using my craft knife to cut my cardboard I'm going to probably be using my um, corner rounder tool, glues, a bunch of different glues. Um, this is for my scoring for my, I'm going to be using this embossing tool to score my papers to cut them down. A ruler, just so I have everything the sizes that I want. And then a piece of cardboard, a little bit bigger than the size that you want so that you, when you cut it down, it is the size of the page that you'd like to put in your ephemera holder. So for mine, I'm going to do mine five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall because my ephemera holder is about six by nine. So I want it just a little bit smaller than that um, so that it doesn't stick out too much. And then I'm also going to be using some cardstock. So I don't know which one exactly here, but so I'm going to be using some double-sided cardstock as my for my flaps to hold everything in. And then I'm probably also going to be using this is just um, a book page uh, out of a Sears and Roebuck um, replica that I've distressed a little bit to cover up my cardboard. So this is just this cardboard is just a, an old box from my baggies you can see there so this is what I'm going to be using to for my sturdy page and then I'm just to cover that up I'm going to be using some of this so I think that's about it so let's get started okay I'm also probably going to be using these um, brads I forgot to mention those and my one inch circle punch to make the closure so um, but you don't have to to use um, those if you don't want to you could do like a figure eight closure or you could just use some ties or something like that so but this is I think what I'm going to be using okay so the first thing I'm going to do is cut down my cardboard so like I said I want mine to be five and a half by eight and a half inch tall so I'm going to do some measuring and some marking and some cutting so that I get it um, pretty much straight now it looks like this side is pretty well straight but I think I am just going to cut it up just a little bit to make sure I have a nice straight edge to measure from. So I'm using my craft knife to cut that off and you just use 
some pressure there um, to cut that down nice and straight. Okay, so now I'm gonna measure my uh, tall width first here. So eight and a half. Make sure I got that lined up. And then I will cut that. I'll save that for something else. And then um, this is this has got two pretty jagged edges. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, since I want this to be five and a half and it's a little over six inches right now, I'm just going to line this up with my, um, my pad underneath here that has the grid lines on it. And I'm going to, I'm going to line it up along the bottom and then I'm going to make one edge straight here using my grid lines so that I know I've got a perpendicular, perpendicular size. All right, so now that I have that, I can do my side measurement to make this five and a half inches wide. And then I know where to cut that. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and Start cutting. Okay. Now I have my page and I'm just gonna grab my, this is my ephemera holder. So you can see here, it'll fit nicely in there. I'm probably, you know, gonna use a paper clip or something, or maybe even a, um, what are these, binder clip to hold it in there to make sure it stays in. And with a tab at the top, I'll be able to find it real easily. Okay, so now we're going to cover this thing. Okay, so to cover this thing, since I'm gonna be putting the flaps over top of this, I'm not gonna be real concerned about even this being covered up, but I don't want the blue from this cardboard to be showing. So I am going to cover it up and since I'm thinking about putting one of these envelopes on both sides of this, this will give me a start on the other side when I do the second one. So I'm just going to, actually I think I'm gonna do it this way so I can get it kind of centered. And then what we'll do is we'll cut the edges out. So I'm just going to come in at an angle, leaving just a teeny tiny bit across the edge so that when I turn the folds up, I can cover that corner. So you start at an angle coming into the corner, but you really wanna leave about the width of whatever your board in the middle is and then come out at an angle on the other side. So come in at an angle to the corner, leave the thickness of the board and come out on the other side. All right, so now we are ready to do our folds. And I'm just gonna put it right side up just so I know, just so I know what I'm looking at. Let me grab my, grab some paper here. So I'm gonna do the top and the bottom first. I'm gonna cover those first with glue. And just turn that in. Make it as smooth as I can. I may get my phone folder out here or, you know, an old credit card or something just to make sure that's nice and flat. Actually, I'm gonna do that on this side as well. And then we'll do the opposite side that we just did. And then we're gonna do the edges. Now, before I do the edges, I am going to put, I'm gonna start 
putting all the glue on. And when I put the glue on these sides, I'm gonna try to get right into that corner as much as I can. If I hopefully don't glue it down so that I can pinch those edges up before I turn them in. So I'm just gonna pinch the edge here and here a little bit before I turn this over. And I do that so that the corner of the board is nice and covered. And I got glue coming out all over the place, so make sure you get that cleaned up. But now I have a nice sharp corner and the entire board is covered and it's covered on that side as well. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. And let's see. Get my glue on. And then I'm gonna make sure I get into that corner on both edges. And just a little pinch right there and right there. And there we go. So we got it covered. Now we can do our envelope. Like I said, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do an envelope on both sides of this. So now we can do either side and not have to worry about um, covering it because I am gonna put another piece of paper in the middle of this, um, this little envelope that I'm making, you know, so this is gonna be covered up as well, but that's, I'm okay with that. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to cut the flaps for our envelope. Okay, I've grabbed my double-sided cardstock here and I'm going to cut my flaps. Now the first flap that I want, um, we're going to have a wide flap that comes down and up from the bottom. So, and those two are gonna overlap, which is going to give me the overlap I need to create the closure. And then the side flaps will be a little bit smaller um, so that they're not too much in the way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut the wide flaps. And I am gonna cut this, I've decided to cut it as wide as my page. Um, so this whole paper will be covered and, and I'm okay with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first cut my um, paper at five and a half inches. So this is right now 12 by 12 inches, but I'm just gonna cut it down. I'm gonna cut a five and a half inch strip off of this paper and I think I'm still gonna need that so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut enough to make an overlap um, and leave also a half inch for us to create a hinge for it now this is eight inches or I'm sorry eight and a half inches tall and I want to leave a half inch at the top for me to put a tab on at the top so that it'll stick out of my ephemera holder and I'll be able to see that cute little tab sticking up there. So my flap or my envelope when it's done is really only gonna be eight inches tall by five and a half inches wide. So what I'm gonna do, so I have my five and a half inches wide, I'm going to cut a three inch strip from here and this will be our bottom flap. And then I'm going to cut a seven inch strip and this will be our top flap, okay? So now, before I cut the side strips, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna use my scoring tool, but you could just use a magazine um, and a, you know, a bone folder or something like that to do this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create my hinge. So I'm gonna try to see if I can make sure this is right side up. <laughs> because I can't see the writing, but um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make a half inch score mark here. And then on the three inch, the one coming up from the bottom, I'm going to put a half inch score mark as well, okay? Let me move this out of the way. And now you can see, after I fold these score marks, we're going to have a bottom flap that comes up this way and a top flap is going to be down a half an inch 
from the top. And that's gonna be our flap. So you can see that there is an overlay there of about a half an inch or so, maybe an inch that, that's overlapped. And that's good because then we're going to be able to put our brad in there. So this is what the outside of the envelope is gonna look like. And we just need to get our sides on so that our little pieces of ephemera don't come flying off, <laughs> flying out the sides. So I'm gonna grab my cutter again and the side inches, since I want my envelope to be um, eight inches tall, I'm gonna cut this down to eight inches. Actually, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the smaller one first. So I want my flaps on either side to come in an inch. And then if I leave a half an inch for my hinge times two, I'm gonna need about a three inch piece for my side flaps, okay? So now I have um, a three inch piece. I'm gonna cut this down to eight inches tall. And actually, I'm gonna cut the hole off. And then I'm gonna cut this in half so that I have two one and a half inch pieces for my flaps. I'm gonna try and line that up as best I can. Give me a nice even cut. And then we're gonna do the same thing with these that we did with the top and bottom flaps. We're gonna put a half inch score mark on there. Um, so I'm gonna, these are right side up. I'm gonna um, score one right side up and one upside down so that I can put one on the left and one on the right. So I'm just doing a half inch score mark on that one. And then this one I'm gonna turn upside down and also do a half inch score mark there. All right, and I think we're done with our scoreboard now. And once again, you could just, you, you don't even need to score these if you don't want to, you could just fold them up if you wanted to. So these are gonna be my side flaps to keep all my ephemera inside our little envelope here, okay? So that's what those are gonna look like. Now we're going to start assembling this thing. And before I do that, I'm gonna take each of my flaps and I'm just going to trim them down so they have a little bit of an angle to them. So I'm just cutting into my fold line and making a little bit of an angle so that they don't stick out or kind of go on top of each other. This just makes it look a little bit nicer. And then after I do this, I'm also going to round the corners of my flaps because I think that'll look nice too. Okay, so I have all my flaps done. And all my little bitty pieces here. And then I'm gonna take my corner rounder and just pick a, pick a nice corner round here and round all these corners up. So they're not so prickly there and I'm going to do the. I'm going to do all all of them all all of them that that now you could just um you know do like make an envelope that already has a backing to it and glue it down um, but I really didn't like the look of the pointy envelope for some reason. So that's why I'm kind of doing these four flaps, but you could certainly do this a different way and just do, um, you know, just have it so that it's an envelope sitting on here that you can open up all four flaps so that you can see your ephemera, you know, on this, on this page. Okay. So now we're going to start assembling this. Okay. So to glue this down, um, I could just mark a half an inch down from the top because I know I want this to be eight inches tall by five and a half inches wide. But instead of doing that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where my side panels go to so that I'm sure um, I'm gonna make sure I have enough room to get everything down because I don't wanna have to cut these down if I don't have to. And since I want this flap to be on top, I need to put it down first. So I need to glue this down first and then these are gonna go on second. But I wanna be sure I have enough room in between my top and bottom flaps 
for these side flaps to fit in after I've glued them down. So I'm just lining up my side flap along the edge and I have maybe just a teeny tiny little border, maybe a 16th of an inch, a very small amount um, to leave room for, you know, the width of the paper or the thickness of the paper. And I'm just gonna make a mark at the top here. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side with the other piece of paper because, you know, if I <laughs> screwed up measuring them and they're a little bit off, I don't wanna have to squeeze anything. So I can see now where my um, where my the tops of my bands go and I'm just going to make a little a light pencil mark a little bit below them because I really don't want it to show and I'll know that I need to to glue my top flap a little bit above this line okay so I have that on there so that I can see it pretty well and instead of using my glue stick I am probably going to use my um, three in one beacon three in one glue for this. So I'm going to, I'm going to glue down my bottom flap and the bottom flap is just going to go right at the very bottom of the paper and centered in there. So that's my first flap that I'm going to do. And I'm just going to add some glue to the flap itself and just try and, I'm just going to try and spread it around a little bit because I do want this to have a good um, connection. So I'm just going to take my finger and make sure we've got glue all over this flap. And then I'm going to kind of fold it in with my fingers and place it down there as close to the bottom as I can get. And you can see my cutter is probably has a little bit different. My paper cutter has a different measurement than this grid board because you can see I have a little bit a teeny tiny little border over there but that should be okay because when I glue these down I can just move those in that's no problem whoa and my glue is spinning out all over the place so let's go ahead and get this one down and I'm going to use the glue <laughs> that's coming out don't want to waste it and then I'm going to get the cap on that right after we get this glued down Okay, so now remember, I'm going to turn this upside down so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to fold this flap in so I can see where I'm placing it. And I'm going to put this paper right above that line that I made so I can't see my pencil mark on there. Let me get this glue back on here, even though we're going to have to use it again, but I don't want it to keep squeezing out there. Okay. So now you can see we have our two flaps and we have a nice little one inch overlap here, which is good. And then I'm gonna do the side flaps. But before I do the side flaps, I am going to make the mark for my brad so that I don't have to try to do that in between all the different flaps and everything that we have going on here. So I'm going to fold these nice and flat here and I'm going to grab my paper piercer. And now I know that I have, I know that I have a, a little bit of an overlap. I want to be sure that I get this overlap. So what I'm going to do is on my, my grid here, I'm going to line up this flap with one of these lines. Okay. So I know, so this is at the 10 inch line on my mat here. Okay. And then when I fold this down, I know that the bottom flap goes up to the 10 inch mark. So I know I can about a half an inch down from there is a good place to maybe make my, my hole. And since I am going, I think I have my five and a half inch going this way, I can come in my two and a half plus a quarter. And I'm this one, I'm just going to eyeball and I'm going to make a little mark there and see if it went through. I don't know that it did. It's kind of hard to tell on this one. There we go. Okay, so I have one hole right there and then a hole in my bottom one there. So now I have my holes ready to go and it probably um, poked this just a little bit, but I'm gonna be covering this up because I don't want my flaps to show here. And you don't, you certainly don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that. Okay, so I have my hole ready to go and we can put our side flaps in. So now, hopefully, if I measured everything right, 
these should fit in here just about perfectly so that I don't have to cut anything down and then I'll have a nice inside um, place here to put my ephemera. So I'm just gonna check these and make sure they're right side up the way that you know I want to put them. And I'm gonna do one at a time here and we'll do the same thing. We're just going to put some glue on the flap and I'm sure my glue is gonna start spitting out all over the place. So before I put that down, I'm gonna <laughs> keep my lid on this time and spread this out just a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm just gonna try and line up my flap with the edges of the top and bottom flaps. And if there's a little bit of gap, which it looks like there might be in mine, I'm just gonna center the flap in between the top and bottom flaps. And that's not gonna matter. I mean, hopefully I won't have ephemera small enough that it could actually sneak out of those edges. And I can tell you right now I don't. <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna do the other one, same thing. Get some glue on there. <clears throat> Put my glue away. Okay. And same thing, I'm going to fold that flap up, center it between the top and bottom, and try to line up the side edges with each other. And we'll give that a second to dry. Okay, my flaps are all dry, and now you can kind of get an idea of how this is going to look. And I'm going to cover the inside before we finish up the outside. So you could definitely just leave it like this. Um, you know, you, you do see the flaps in here and if you had a different, you know, cover paper, obviously it would show, it would show differently there and you might want to cover them up. Um, I want to cover them up just because they, you know, I don't want something to get stuck. I mean, they should be glued down well, but I just don't want something to get stuck. And besides, I think it'll look pretty to have a nice cover on the inside here. So I just got a scrap piece of paper that I kind of liked, and I'm going to, um, once again, I could, you know, cut this down to eight by five and a half, but to be sure that it fits the way I want it to, I'm going to mark it. And I think I'm going to mark it on this side so I can see a little bit better. And actually, um, I don't, I might need to cut off just a teeny tiny bit on that side. And then let's check this side. Let me do this down at the bottom. So get the width here. And we can go ahead and cut this down. And I'm just gonna cut off a teeny tiny bit here. I probably don't really need to, but I really don't want those flaps to get caught as I'm trying to close things up and stuff. So just cut a little piece off there. Okay. So let's see if this will fit before I glue it down. Oops, she's going first. I knew that. Perfect. So now my um, papers on the inside, my ephemera when I have it there on the inside will be nice and poppy. All right, so I'm just gonna do the inside with some glue here and then I'll just do the edges of this to make sure it sticks down everywhere. <clears throat> and once again, this is, you know, this is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I think I'm going to get my phone folder again and just make sure this is all nice and flat. All right. 
Looking good. Okay, now I want to do my closure. And like I said, you could do like a, I think there, it's like a figure eight. So, you know, you have a, a circle here with some string on it and a circle here so that you can do a tie a figure eight if you wanted to do that. Um, I wanted to try something a little bit different. So what I did, um, we have our holes punched because there's just gonna be one um, closure piece here. I cut two one inch circles of some scrap cardstock I had. So this was double-sided cardstock. It's, you know, fairly um, firm. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my paper piercer again, is I'm going to put a hole in both of these. Now, I'm only going to put one on the outside, but I am going to put one on the inside, excuse me, to reinforce, reinforce the hole. And actually, I may do this I don't know if that'll show. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. So I'm going to put one on the inside to reinforce the hole for the brad and then one on the outside for, you know, decoration and to reinforce the hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two together. And since it's a one inch punch, I'm just going to put this to get my middle, my center hole. I'm going to line these two up with a one inch block on my grid here. And then I'm going to use my paper piercer to punch a hole right where the lines cross so that I have a nice center hole, I think, I hope. All right, and then I'm going to use a hole punch. I have a small hole punch. I think this is a 1 8 inch hole punch to actually punch those holes um, there so that the brad can go through. But I at least had a nice marker on there so that I know where to punch them. So I'm just trying to center that little hole that we made in there. And if it's not exactly perfect, that's okay. And um, if you would like to distress them at all, I just kind of gave them a little, little distressing there to make them look a little old. And then I'm gonna choose a brad. Um, let's see, I have all kinds of colors going on here. Maybe the copper one would look nice. So I'm going to use a copper brad. And then what I'm gonna do to make this easy to open is we're going to put the brad through the bottom flap. And actually I may need to punch those holes a little bit bigger so that they'll go through. So I'm gonna do the same thing with these. I'm just gonna punch out that pierce hole that we made so that our brad will go through. Okay, and then when I do this, and I'm gonna glue this down and glue this on so that it will stay right there. So that when we close out, close up our folder, our envelope here, we'll have the brad piece coming through like that. And that's what will hold it together. But because it will fall apart, if I don't glue everything down, <laughs> I'm gonna glue it down. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna use, um, I don't know what's gonna be my best glue here. Maybe this diamond glaze, if I can get it open. I always have a problem with this one. Oh, there we go. I think I can get it. I'm gonna use a little diamond glaze on my brad. Maybe. <clears throat> I've cut through this enough. Yeah, there we go. That are my woo. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry about that. That there was a a plug in there. That's why it wasn't coming out, and I it spurted out and almost got me in the eye. Luckily, it did not. It was on my face, but. It was close to my eye, which is why I screamed. So I'm sorry about that. Okay. Now I have my diamond glaze all on there and I'm going to put this through and I'm gonna give it some time. Actually, maybe what I'll do, I put it on the wrong side because I want the decorative side that is the, to be showing there. So it's all over my 
<laughs> all over my brad because it spurted out and was going everywhere. So I'm gonna try and clean this up a little bit. And then I'm going to let this dry on my paper before we go further with that. And I'm gonna clean up this mess here, so I'll be right back. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and put my top circle on. And I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use my glitter glue for this. And you can see it does actually hang over just a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up and I'm gonna glue it down with the holes matching but I'm gonna leave just a little piece of the bottom with no glue so that it doesn't um, you know, stick down. But we'll also wait for this to dry before, before we go any farther. So I'm just gonna put this on so that the holes are nice and matched up. And I'm gonna make sure there's no glue coming out over here. And we'll also put this aside to dry along with the brad that's drying in the paper. So while those are drying, we can go ahead and make our tab. Now you don't, you don't have to make a tab, obviously. I want to be able to see it coming up above my, um, my ephemera folder altogether. So all I did was I grabbed a scrap piece of cardstock. And you may have seen me make these before. But basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this down just about, just about an inch maybe. Okay, and so that I have a nice um, fold there. And then I'm going to line this up with my tab maker and punch the one side. And then because I want my tab to be this whole piece. I think this is plenty. I don't even know how wide this is. This is about two and a half inches wide. Then I can just flip it over and create the punch on the other side, which gives me a nice little tab. And then I'm going to cut off the excess. <clears throat> and I'm just going to hold that on, put the cutter in the groove and cut right across there. So now we have a nice little tab that we can add to the top of the page. Move those out of the way. And you could, you know, actually put a label on here if you wanted to. So like I could, you know, whatever ephemera goes in here, I could make a little label that says, you know, stamps or, or labels or numbers or, you know, quotes or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little distressing on here first. Grab a distress paper here. And I'm just going to open this up and get the edges nice and distressed. Perfect. And then I'm gonna glue this on the top and you could sew it on or you could staple it on. That's up to you. I don't think I'm gonna sew through this since it's there's cardboard there. It's probably a little too much to do, um, but I am going to use my glitter glue again and I'm just going to put it along this bottom edge up to the first um, curve there. And you could, you know, glue the whole thing down. Actually, I may just put just a teeny bit in here and here so that it all stays together. And then I'm going to very carefully put that on there. So we have a nice tab top there. And let's see if I can find my pin. I used to have a dangle, but it fell off and I haven't fixed it yet. <laughs> okay. So now it looks like I got that a little bit uneven. I was just gonna see if I could straighten it up a bit. There we go. That's better. 
And then you can also see when I do this side, when I do the flaps and everything, this will be perfect to be kind of ready to put that second one on. So I think this is dry. Let's check our, I think that one looks pretty good too. So that, this brad isn't gonna show. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. So now this one's gonna go like this so that we have our brad end sticking up. And I'm just going to take some more glitter glue. And since this one, um, I don't think it'll show. I'm just gonna put glue all around this paper here. Make sure it's nice and covered. And then we'll let that dry as well. It'll only show when we have our envelope open. All right, I'm gonna let those dry and then we'll be right back. Okay, I think everything's almost dry. You can see I added a little paper reinforcement that I've distressed and stamped on there just for a little added extra something. But also, you could definitely collage the front of this. Um, I think this would be, there's lots of space there. It would be a perfect place to add some inspiration. So every time you came looking for ephemera, you'd be nice and inspired by what you see there. So I might do that at a later time because I think that would be fun on here. So let's see if this does what I want it to do. So I really just want a place where I can look at my ephemera without having to pull it in and out of pockets. So in my ephemera holder right now, you can see like I have my labels all in this pocket which is great, but, and I know they're labels, but to find maybe exactly what I'm looking for, I have to pull them all out. I have to spread them all out somewhere to look through them or just, you know, look through them and get them back in there. And same with my numbers. Like I don't even, these, because these are so small, I'm afraid to put them in any um, of my pockets because I'm afraid they'll be too hard to get out or whatever. And because I have so many of them, they're, um, they're all stacked up on top of each other. So what I was hoping this would help solve for me is that I would have this little envelope and I could just spread things out in here and I could easily find, you know, some of the little pieces that I might be looking for to use um, as I'm, you know, making things. And then they could all just stay right in here and I would close it up and this would be where they would, you know, stay in my ephemera folder. So I could, you know, just place it right in here and you could see, you know, our tab that we put on is right there. So I'd know right where it was, or I could even um, use like a, a binder clip to kind of keep it in place, you know, where I want it to be so that it's not moving around on me and it's right there, which I also like that idea as well. So that is it, my friends. And you can see I've already started working on another one for this side so that I can put my labels into this one because I think this is going to really do what I want it to do. So I'm sure that if I was just shaking it around, those pieces of paper, you know, might find their way out of the sides or something. But um, I think this will be a perfect solution to be able to just open this up, find what I'm looking for, and then keep everything all together in one place and then right back into my ephemera folder when I'm done with it. So there you have it, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you try to make something like this or, you know, maybe something based on this or inspired by this. And if you do, please leave me a comment down below or tag me on Instagram. I'm at Mad Paper Crush. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd love to see that. And I'd love to see a comment too, to know that you were here and watching. And I hope you all have a great week. I will see you in the next video. Take care, friends. Bye-bye.